Now we've set up the virtual machine, we can start it running. The first time you run the virtual machine, it will ask you the location of the ISO file you wish to install from. I've already done this. And at this point, the installation starts to progress. The first question you're asked is which language you want to install. Unfortunately, we've only got the choice of English United States, but we can change the time and currency format to suit United Kingdom. Then install now and wait for it to start the installation. At this point, we need the product key. I'll just quickly type it in. And when you get to this stage, make sure you choose the one with a graphical user interface. Read the terms and conditions, quite brief as we are using a volume license. And then we want to do a custom install. I like to create a new partition and leave it the full size of the hard drive. We'll get a message that Windows will create an additional system partition and we'll say OK to that. And then next to carry on the installation. We now have to wait for the machine to do several reboots and ask us some more questions. So I'll pause the video at this point. We now need to give the admin account a secure password. And finally, we now have the option to log back in. And once logged in, we now have the server management dashboard available. We'll come back to this later. We don't need it just straight away. One thing that I personally like to do is add my PC icon, my desktop icon to the desktop. Quickest way of doing this is at a Windows run prompt, desk.cpl space comma comma, and then add the computer icon. This I find very handy for later use. Before we go any further, there's two important things you have to do. First thing you need to do is give your server a static IP address. So we'll head across to the networking sharing centre. We'll change the adapter setting and bring up the properties. TP IP version 4 and we'll give it a static IP address. I'm going to use 10.1.1.254. Subnet mask, we're going to customize. We'll leave the default gateway blank at the moment. And for the DNS, we're going to use ourselves as the DNS. 
you could put 127.0.0.1 in, but I prefer to put in the proper IP address of the machine once more. So that's done. Second thing you need to do is give your machine a logical name. So we'll bring up its properties from this PC, change the settings, and change once more. You can see it has a random jumble of name. I'm going to call this machine Ken. And at that point, it will probably insist on a reboot. That's why I always do this one second. So at that point, your machine is now ready. And we will move it on one more stage in the next video.